I was going to start this video off doing a big speech about my CNC journey over the last five years, but the reality is this explains it much quicker. I started on one of these smallest, cheapest CNC machines on the market that a lot of people absolutely despise. And over the course of five years with a lot of hard work, I'm now fortunate enough to own one of the best CNC machines on the market for makers and small businesses. So why is that relevant to you? Well, I went through all the trials and tribulations of running smaller desktop CNC machines and I'm still doing it today. And ultimately helping a lot of people along the way trying to get past their issues. Now, one of the biggest issues has always been feeds and speeds. And I set myself a challenge of how can I make that easier for the users so they don't have to struggle like I did. And that's what we're here for today. So let's talk about only CNCs. Now developing a platform like this takes a lot of time and a lot of money. But one of the amazing things I've been able to do is deliver this to you for free thanks to our brilliant sponsors. They want to see you succeed with your CNC machines as much as I do and ultimately just make some cool projects. So I want to say a big thank you to these brands for supporting this platform. So to put the solution or the platform into context, it's worth recapping what the actual problem is. When it comes to feeds and speeds, there is lots of data out there for your bits. There are ways to calculate this yourself and there are also other speeds and feeds platforms out there to help you along the way. But the reality is they are all based on what the bit is capable of handling, not necessarily the machine. So when you're running it on a more powerful machine like the Onefinity, it's going to be fine. But when you try and run it at those settings on smaller machines, you're going to get failures, ruin jobs, break bits. And ultimately, that's when people get disheartened, walk away, and their CNC machine starts collecting dust. So what is so special about only CNCs? Well, there's a few reasons. Well, first, as already mentioned, it is free, making it accessible to everyone. Second, it is specifically designed for benchtop and desktop CNC machines, factoring in the entire setup, not just what the bit is capable of machining. And third, I have done everything I possibly can to make this process as simple as possible for the users to hopefully make your life much easier. Now, just to manage expectations about the platform, it is not a magic wand. It is there to give you some confidence and to get you in the ballpark in order to allow you to proceed and still make your projects. There will be things that may need tweaking depending on your particular setup or the bits that you are using. And I would definitely still recommend learning as much as you can about feeds and speeds in general. But as I say, ultimately it's allowed you to give you the confidence to go from A to B and keep making cool projects as quickly as possible. Now, when I talk about simple, I literally mean three steps after you have created your account. Now, to create your account, there is a button at the top of the page to allow you to do this. It's going to ask you some very basic details such as your name and email address. It will then send you a verification code because we just need to check that you are human. Do check your spam or junk folders if you do not see it in your main inbox. And if you still don't see it, we'll check that you actually put in the correct email address. But once your account is set up, you can log into the platform and you have access to everything you need. Now on the first page, it is going to ask you to define your setup. Basically, select the CNC machine that you are using and the router or spindle that you are using. Now for the spindle or router selection, we've tried to cover off as much as we can, ranging from a 60 watt spindle on a 38 machine, right up to a one and a half kilowatt VFD setup. So hopefully the option that you need should be in there. Once you've done that, move on to the next page where you're going to be asked to select a material and a bit option. Now, once you've done that, you can move on and get the feeds and speeds that you need. It really is that simple. Now let's run through the last page in a bit more detail. At the top, it's going to have a toggle to switch between millimeters and inches, and it's then going to clarify the information that you just put into it. So remind you of the machine, the spindle, the material, and the bit, just so you know that the information is accurate for what you want. It will then give you the data for clearance and profile cuts. Now the reality is there is nearly a quarter of a million data points in the back end of this system, and it would have been impossible for me to check every single one of those on every single machine. So what we have done to help the platform is building a multiplier button. Now what this means in reality is if you start machining using the recommended settings and you find that maybe that they are a bit too fast or even maybe a bit too slow, 
you can use the multiply button to change the values either plus or minus in 10% increments. Now the reason that we implemented this button is to allow the community to feed back to us. If you find better settings that are more, what are being recommended, you can share that multiplier value back to us, we can update the database and then get everybody better settings that are using this platform. So ultimately, you're going to help everybody else out there by feeding back that information and making everyone's results even better. And finally, we know some people like to keep hard copies of things, so we did add a print button right in there at the very end. And once you have all the information that you need, you can either log out or go back to the start and get new information for a new setup. Now we just wanted to quickly talk about some of the lists on the platform at the moment. Now obviously this is for launch, so some of the selections are limited. We try to include as many machines as we can in there at the moment. I think we're approaching 50, and I say we will continue to expand that list as new machines come out or new people come forward with recommendations. Now specifically on the materials and the bit list themselves, they may appear a little bit limited. Obviously, we've tried to simplify it down as much as possible, but as we go on, more things will be added to those lists. So for example, instead of just hardwood, we'll start breaking that down into specifics such as maybe oak, walnut, and expanding on that. And a similar thing with the bits as well. We've gone with a selection of bits that are the most common that we know people are using, but we're gonna to continue to add to that, maybe even start adding specific branded bits in there as well, and keep these databases growing, ultimately giving you much more options. But this is what we wanted to do for launch, which was keep it as simple as possible to get going and then move forward from here. So I just wanna quickly cover off tapered ball nose bits and V bits in the database at the moment. Now the step over on the tapered ball nose bits and the smaller angled V bits have been deliberately set at a low value. I think it was 10%. The reason for this is most people using those bits are going to be doing things like 3D relief carvings or finer text work where you want that sharper, precise detail. So ultimately, that is why it is being set so low. But as I said earlier, this is not a magic wand. It is just to get you in the rough area that you need to be to possibly tweak them yourself. So for example, if you wanted to take the step up, step over right higher, you can do, and maybe just bring the feed right down a little bit to compensate that. And a similar thing when it comes to the larger angled V bits, the 60 and the 90 degree bits. Now, the deeper you start going with these type of bits, ultimately the more material you start taking out. So if you are doing a really deep cut with one of those V bits and almost maxing out the length of the blade, you're probably going to need to slow the rate down to accommodate that because ultimately it is adding more pressure to the bit and to the machine. If you start to get things like chatter or bouncing, then ultimately that means it is going a bit too fast, so slow the feed rate down. Now you may see me mention only CNCs on other videos in the future, but what I have done is set up its own social media accounts and YouTube channel in order to post videos specifically about that platform. So if you've got a second, check out the links down below and go and follow them all. And that really is it. I have put a lot of time and effort into this platform and I really do hope it is the solution that everybody needs to get from setting your machine up to making cool projects in a much quicker time frame. Now as I say, it will continue to develop and grow over time this is simply just the start but do let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below finally i do just want to say a very very big thank you again not only to the sponsors but for the people that helped me with testing this and also to my patrons none of this could have been done without you so thank you all very much i'll see you all on the next video